from Tech TV, welcome to Panorama. I'm your hostess, Gada Hamadani. We're one year away from the next federal election. From coast to coast, the Conservative Party of Canada is vibrant and working hard to win back the government seats from the Liberal. From Erin Mills, the most controversial riding in Miss Saga, I'd like to welcome the trusted, tested and experienced former Member of Parliament for 2008 till 2015, and the Conservative Party nomination candidate, Bob Dickert. Thank you. Welcome, Bob. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for being here with us, actually. Bob, please pardon my French. Mm -hmm. I would like to start with a borrowed quote from President Trump. Okay. What the hell is going on? <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> that's, a, that's a good question, and <laughs> that can be answered in many contexts. But uh, what as you know, what's going on in uh, Ms. Saga Air Mills, specifically next Tuesday, November 6th, uh, mm -hmm. is that there is a nomination meeting uh, for, uh, to select a candidate for the Conservative Party for the 2019 election. I'm running. Uh, that will be the, 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 the sixth time that I've, that I've run. As you know, I was the uh, Conservative Member of Parliament for uh, Ms. Saga Air uh, Mills and Aaron Dale, uh, which is uh, the same writing. There was a uh, change made to the boundaries in 2014 for the 2015 election, uh, but it is uh, over 80% the same writing as it was since uh, 2008 when I started representing it in Parliament. Uh, and uh, and I, I was the only uh, Conservative candidate elected for two terms in Mississauga in, in over 20 years. Um, and uh, so I, I believe that I have the best opportunity to return the, uh, the seat of Aaron Mills to the Conservative caucus and help our leader, Andrew Scheer, form a government. I think that's what we must do, uh, because in my opinion, uh, uh, Prime Minister Trudeau and his government are uh, failing to uh, do the things that they promised to Canadians, and they're taking Canada in a direction uh, which I think uh, will be very problematic uh, for the future in terms of the opportunities that, that uh, their policies um, uh, will uh, not provide for, uh, for Canadians, especially young Canadians. Uh, so it's, a, it's very important that, that all the members of the Conservative Party come out uh, to the voting station, which is at the Tompkin Twin Arenas on Tompkin Road, uh, next Tuesday, November 6, between 4.30 and 8.30 p.m., and cast their ballot. Uh, that day, they just, it, it's just a polling station, as in a general election, so they just come and go. Uh, there are two other candidates running, uh, uh, but neither of them have any political experience. Uh, and. Um, and in a sense, uh, they're each uh, uh, representing one particular group within uh, the community. And uh, as you know, uh, all of Mississauga and, 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 and much of urban Canada is very diverse. In fact, the Aaron Mills riding uh, may arguably be the most diverse riding in all of Canada. And having represented it uh, for seven years in Parliament, I understand it very well. And as Conservatives, we need to reach out and be inclusive and, and uh, reach out to all Conservative-minded voters of any cultural or religious background uh, uh, and build a broad coalition of supporters. That's what I've done uh, since I started running uh, back in 2004. We built a team and we built a coalition of voters and we won two successive elections. It wasn't easy, but oftentimes people think it is easy because they saw that we won it twice before. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I think this riding uh, is a riding that's absolutely necessary if the Conservatives are going to form a government in 2019. Actually, you're right. You know, it's like recently we've been, you know, it's like seeing um, immature, political immature, uh, power hungry, and uh, opportunists running for. It's like running on the race, in the race. So, is the party has any vision, any policy in place? You know, it's like to control this. Well, What's I mean, I think you know, you have, we have to appeal to the long-term members of the party. The party, mm -hmm. the members of the, uh, of the party, who will still be members a year from today. Yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of people come and go and they, they buy a membership for one year to mm -hmm. support one candidate and then they, sure. they disappear. We've had yeah. uh, situations where people will join two or three different parties in the same year to support a friend from their particular community. Um, but I think it's incumbent upon the people who have a long history of supporting the Conservative Party to get involved and, and, mm -hmm. and support the candidate uh, who in their opinion has the best chance of winning in that particular riding. Um, all parties are going through this uh, mm -hmm. issue. Uh, everybody wants to be inclusive, uh, but one of the tests is will they p 
put down their own 10 or 15 dollars to to purchase mm -hmm. a membership and and the federal uh, the, the conservative party of canada has made some changes in that regard they do have a mm -hmm. no cash membership rule now which i think is a good step in the right direction mm -hmm. they probably need to do more but the um, ndp and the liberal party are, are facing the same situation um, periodically uh, there are uh, elections where there is a, a sweep transformation. So in uh, this year, in May of 2018, here in Ontario, there was a broad sweep in, in favor of the Conservative Party. A lot of people got elected. Mm -hmm. um, same thing happened in the federal election in 2015 for the Liberals. So to a certain extent, people see that happening and they think that really all they need to do is get enough of their friends to show up on a particular day mm -hmm. to support them in the nomination and then they'll just sit back and wait and hope that they get carried in with the tide as if they're on a surfboard mm -hmm. uh, where they bought a lottery ticket. But those of us who have been through a lot of campaigns know that uh, there's a lot of hard work that needs to be done and you need to understand the, 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 the campaign process, be able to build a team and be able to reach out to all the voters mm -hmm. of every description who believe in the policies that the party put forward. Mm -hmm. Well, you mentioned, you know, it's like mm -hmm. the cash and the credit card. Mm -hmm. What we heard actually, and that right, it's like endless saga, let's say. Mm -hmm. uh, some people are, you know, it's like buying the prepaid credit card mm -hmm. for their, uh, it's like friends for right. the membership. Right. So how would the party, you know, would control? Well, I've heard that. I mean, yeah. I, you know, I haven't seen the the particular evidence of it myself, mm -hmm. but I've heard that these things do mm -hmm. go on, and I understand that the party can check yeah. if it wishes to. Uh, mm -hmm. because uh, prepaid credit cards have a different um, yes. uh, number yeah. uh, than, a, than a credit card that's issued in somebody's mm -hmm. name and the party can, can search its, its records to see if uh, more than one membership was purchased by the same credit card number with a, it has a, some kind of a uh, code mm -hmm. on it that they, that they can tell is a prepaid card. Yeah. And if they find you know, more than two, say, um, membership bought on the same prepaid uh, uh, membership card or credit card, then uh, they would they, they should and they have the right to cancel those memberships. Um, and I know that was an that was an issue when the uh, Conservative Party had a leadership contest in 2017, mm -hmm. and a number of uh, memberships were canceled because it was found that they were purchased on two or three prepaid credit cards. So uh, uh, hopefully people haven't done that here in Aaron mm -hmm. Mills, but uh, certainly it's incumbent upon the party and its staff to check to make sure that isn't happening. Yeah, and actually there is another thing, you know, it's mm -hmm. like uh, the parties now, they are allowing people, you know, to run even though they didn't, it's like uh, they weren't members for a long time in the party. Right. So is there a change in their policies? They are trying to get but people? But I mean, nobody, people don't, uh, nobody wants to, to, to restrict yeah. um, the right of people to join a party. You mm -hmm. want to, uh, lots of people to join your party, but there's, for most people, there's a difference between supporting a party and being actively involved mm -hmm. and uh, in, in my view the the people who are, who are actively involved are typically the people who have a very long-term interest in in mm -hmm. any poli political party whether yeah. it's the conservatives liberals or the NDP or, or other and uh, and and so those are the people that are best um, mm -hmm. have the best information to choose who is most likely to be able to win an election campaign um, and so you know one of the things that I proposed at the provincial level was that uh, there be a requirement that somebody be a member of the association for say one year prior to a nomination. I don't think it's a lot to ask, but that's not the rule today but and we'll talk about that in the future. Um, I think it's just there are, there are uh, a sufficient number of people who belong to uh, the Conservative Association, Federal Conservative Association, Aaron Mills and all of the other ridings uh, in the Mississauga and, and Brampton area um, that uh, that have uh, been involved in the party for a long enough time, they just need to make sure that they cast their vote and they turn their minds to who of the, th the three candidates that are running has the best opportunity to win the 2019 election because really that's the, m that's the question we're asked to, uh, to decide in this race. We, we, we all want Andrew Scheer to form mm -hmm. a government. We want the conservative policies that are espoused by uh, the party uh, by Andrew Scheer and, and, and the people who, who will put together his platform in the next few months um, and, and by the, the, the party members who, for example, just recently in Halifax had a policy convention and, and laid out a number of uh, policy um, uh, ideas for, the, for the, uh, uh, the leader and the national campaign team. Uh, if we want those things to become the law of Canada and, and Canada to be taken in the direction 
of the, the values that the Conservative Party has always espoused, then we need to ensure that the candidate that represents the party in any riding is a, part, is a person who understands those policies. Um, and so that I would encourage everyone who has that kind of a, uh, an interest in the Conservative Party and its policies to vote in this race. Yeah, but you know, it's like uh, from mm -hmm. it's like our point of view. It's like as mm -hmm. voters, let's say, you know, it's like for us, you know, it's like uh, the members, let's say, mm -hmm. they've been in the party for years, you know, number of mm -hmm. years, mm -hmm. and then someone new mm -hmm. come, they join the party, mm -hmm. they come in groups, and they <coughs> make you know the whole change in the party, or you know, it's like the decision, you know, taken mm -hmm. to choose somebody that probably they are not, you know, it's like. Uh, is not approved by them, mm -hmm. but the party is giving those people the opportunity, the new people, the mm -hmm. new members, the opportunity to like overcome the decision of the real members of the party. You know, it's like, and this is unfair. So, is there anybody's in the party, or you know, it's like to talk, uh, to speak up? You know, this is wrong. Nobody well, can say this is wrong to the party. I think whether you're a, a recent member of the party who joined, you know, within the within the rules, or or you're somebody who has been a, a member for many years, um, you need to focus on who, which of these candidates has the experience mm -hmm. politically in government, uh, and the campaign experience and the campaign team behind them to be able to win the riding in the next election. Because you know you may like the person for many reasons, mm -hmm. uh, but if they can't win the election. It's, there's really no point in going through this exercise. It's not a popularity contest. It's not a high school uh, presidential election. Mm -hmm. It's about winning that seat, representing all the people who live in that in that riding. And as I say, you have to understand the riding is very diverse, and you have to understand that your job as a member of parliament is to serve everyone, not just the particular group that came out in great numbers to help you win a nomination. Mm -hmm. So for the observers, actually, it's like it's clear that we are following the steps of uh, the third world countries in politics recently. So isn't that dangerous? How the party can view, or how it's like, how do you view uh, the situation? Well, I don't, I don't know what goes on in in, in other countries I in terms of how they select candidates. But historically, uh, in Canada, we've selected candidates um, who have a significant experience uh, both within. The, pol the political party that they choose to run for and, and within government and, and, and public, um, uh, the public policy process. Um, uh, so you need to, um, in order to, to be a good member of parliament, you need not only to be able to win a nomination, but you need to win the general election, as I've said, and you also need to understand how public policy formation works in this country, what it is that, that, that parliament does, uh, uh, how um, ideas get uh, brought into and made into legislation. Um, and so I think people see um, what they see politicians do at the local level. Uh, say when they go to a cultural event and they see a politician there and they make a speech um, and they, but they don't understand what actually the requirements of that job are in the Parliament of Canada. Uh, and there's a lot of work that people don't see. They see question period, but they don't see what goes on in committees. They have to understand that whole legislative process or they're not going to be able to do a very good job mm -hmm. representing uh, people. And uh, so historically, that's been the process. You, you, people would join a party. And young people ask me, and I've been involved in the Conservative Party and the, and the democratic process in Canada for over 40 years. They say, well, you know, how, if I wanted to be a, a candidate and a member of parliament someday, you've done it, what, do you, what is your advice to me? And my advice has always historically been, get involved in whatever party, you know, uh, best suits or best fits th the values that you have as an individual, uh, whether that's the conservative, liberal, NDP or others, and get, and, uh, get to know the people locally, uh, get involved in the campaigns, uh, work in the campaigns in a, ver in a variety of capacities, understand that political process and how how it works and what you need to do to win, and 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 uh, and offer yourself um, in, over a period of time as a potential candidate, and you'll you'll find that people will uh, give you guidance. You'll learn the process, and 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 uh, ultimately will will support you, and then you'll have the 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 um, support of a broad base of people within that party, whether it's the Conservative Party or other party. Um, who care about that party and, and its long-term uh, value proposition to the voters. Um, 
Otherwise, if you have people who come in who haven't any background, in my opinion, uh, any background in whatever party they're, they're choosing to run in, uh, parties will run in different directions and there'll be no consistency. Uh, historically here, people understand where the Conservative Party stands on, on things like taxes and, and mm -hmm. um, at keeping taxes low on, on families so that they can use their own resources to um, pursue their own um, goals and, uh, and um, opportunities for their families. Um, Liberals and NDP typically like larger governments, higher taxes, mm -hmm. and having the government take responsibility for things that conservatives would leave in the hands of the individual voters. If you have um, candidates who, who, who run for the Conservative Party who have a background in one of those other parties and think that, that larger government, higher taxes mm -hmm. is, the, is, is the answer, they're in the wrong party and the party will not have any consistency if it keeps selecting people without knowing what their real views are on you know, those, those basic questions of the ideology of the party. Mm -hmm. Uh, is the party derailing? No, I don't think it's derailing. I think it's uh, it's going through um, um, the same evolutionary process that all political parties are going through in Canada. Mm -hmm. um, they're all struggling with this issue. Um, and so it's really, you know, we have freedom of choice in, mm -hmm. in, uh, in political parties as we do in, in most things in life. And, uh, and it's up to the, the uh, um, people who are members of any party who are the people who are members between elections. You know, mm -hmm. when you're in the middle, say uh, two years after an election, two years before the next election, you're still there, you're still uh, paying your membership fee every year, you're still um, donating money to the party and helping it prepare for the next election. Those people should understand they have, in my opinion, they have an obligation to the party that they've supported in the past and they've been members of to, to ensure that they, they choose a candidate who understands the party, espouses the ideology, ideology of the party, and will have an, a good opportunity to win that uh, that election for that party in the you know in the in the next uh, at the next opportunity. How will the, how the Conservative Party uh, how will the Conservative Party win the election of 2019? I think they need to um, uh, first of all uh, point out where Justin Trudeau has failed. Mm -hmm. That's a really long list. You know, you, there aren't too many things that he promised in 2015 he's delivered on the, the 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 main one that i can think of is legalization of marijuana and you know regardless of how you uh feel about that issue he didn't do it in very quick fashion in or a very organized fashion and it's still uh as you see it's been legal now for about two or three weeks in canada and there are all kinds of problems with it um, but there's lots of things he's failing on he's failing on the environment he's failing on trade initiatives uh he's fi he's failing on um on uh, uh, opportunities for, for young people, which he promised. Uh, um, I guess he thinks that um, growing marijuana is the, you know, the, the best opportunity for, for young Canadians. I think we need to do more in terms of uh, support for our manufacturing industries. Uh, I look at how he handled the, um, the uh, trade discussions with the United States, um, and it took far longer than it should have. Um, I believe that uh, he, uh, he made some errors in judgment in, for example, suggesting for a very long time that he wouldn't do any kind of an agreement with the United States without Mexico being part of the deal, but the Mexicans were quite prepared to make a, 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 an agreement with the United States without Canada being involved. Um, uh, there were uh, other aspects of that that could have been done uh, uh, more efficiently uh, and would have had a uh, less detrimental impact on the Canadian economy if he had had his um, focus on that. Uh, in international relations, I think he's, he's made himself and our, our, our uh, country a bit of a laughing stock. You can look at the way he uh, handled his recent visit to India, mm -hmm. for example, uh, where he thinks that uh, changing costume every two or three hours is the way to um, look serious to the largest democracy in the world and, and, a, and a, a potentially very large trade partner with Canada. He um, promised to and try to enter into a trade agreement with China, and then uh, and then try to dictate to them how what their environmental laws should be, uh, and similar things. Uh, and he wanted them to to agree to to change their domestic legislation to look like Canada's, and frankly, they told him to to go away. Mm -hmm. uh, and and a lot of opportunity was lost by doing that. 
uh, he, he delayed the Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement, which was an agreement that, uh, where Canada was going to have a trade relationship with Japan, uh, a, a free trade agreement with Japan and a number of other countries in Asia, not including China. So he delayed that while he was trying to uh, curry favor with the Chinese and then ended up um, um, uh, uh, losing the opportunity to do the, the agreement with China and at the same time seriously delaying the uh, implementation of the uh, Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement, uh, uh, confusing all the other parties to that agreement, and that is something that is very important to Canada. Uh, having, a, having a trade agreement with the United States, with Japan, and with Europe is, is something that Canada needs to um, solidify in order to um, offer good opportunities for its people in the future. And uh, that's something that we did as a government. Uh, you know, we didn't have a NAFTA renegotiation. We did negotiate the Trans-Pacific Partnership and we did negotiate the Canada-European Trade Agreement. And the three um, um, uh, um, elements of, that, of those three trade agreements put Canada in a very good place economically. Uh, so I think that, that our, our leader will point that out. He'll off mm -hmm. also offer some new policies on, uh, on economic development, uh, which uh, I think people will, will, will um, um, uh, support and appreciate. Uh, and the job of the local candidate is to be able to communicate that message well to the people that live within the boundaries of the riding. I've proven that I've done that in, uh, in successive elections. I can do it again, and I would appreciate the support of all the members of the Mississauga Aaron Mills Conservative Association on Tuesday, November 6th at the Tompkin Twin Arenas between 4.30 and 8.30 p.m. Yeah, definitely. It's like, wish you all the best, Bob, Thank you very much. the election. As a Canadian citizen, voting is your right and responsibility. So vote wise, and thank you very much.